Monitor 2, Alpha, Bravo, Bravo, up, change rate, okay, it didn't recognize it, it won't flash, okay, so if it winks, I know that it took the change rate, okay, down, change rate, change rate, stop, I didn't mark this, are you probably marking it, no I'm not marking it, but I'm going to mark some of the ones that I think I'm having trouble That's with, right. see if we agree, go, zoom in, up, up, right, change rate, right, stop, uh, <laughs> I think I would cycle the whole thing one more time. That would be a good idea, you could definitely should try to do that, but another thing you can do is see that okay. different, okay? And the same thing if you can't get stand by, you can skip, you know, if you're in the act of Monitor one, monitor one, monitor two, monitor two, voice command, standby, activate, activate, go, go, left, left, right, stop. Change rate, change rate, easy, easy, still cameras, still cameras, more, more, too much, too much, change rate, Change rate. Tilt up. Right. Stop. Zoom in. Tilt up, stop, focus far, stop, mode active, then the mode too. select, one time, right. check the, LED, the mode active LED is on, the standby LED is off, so that means you've activated. Right, good, yeah. good, okay, so this is all in here, cool. mm -hmm. so you need the VTR record manually if yes. you're going to bother. and we knew that. And you already knew that. Um, so, if we... Uh, I'll, I'll talk to Shep about how we're going to manage that. Okay. Well, like I told Shep, what's most important to us, our most important feedback is your opinion. Sure. That is our most important feedback. So you come back happy, whatever makes you happy. Okay? All right. Um, this would be where you'd deactivate it if you wanted to, um, or as required. That's better. Yeah. Where the data is compared against ground data that we acquired during astronaut training. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see or the effects the space environment has on the speech process and voice recognition. What kind of effects do you think we'll be experiencing? There are several uh, successful applications of voice commanding uh, systems in, in the commercial sector. For example, uh, in the area of aid to the handicapped and handicapped person can control by voice a motorized uh, wheelchair. Uh, medical reporting, currently uh, doctors are using voice recognition to, uh, to generate medical reports whereby they're looking at a x-ray, for example, 
and are examining it and are inputting words into the recognizer that it recognizes and it's generating a report about the doctor's examination. Other applications is access control where they use a speaker verification system. Is the person that wants to get into this door truly the person it is? And they use a specific uh, voice print algorithm to try and determine if this person is indeed the person he says he is. The system that we use is what they call a speaker dependent system, which means that the crew, each crew person has to train the system before it can use it. Training consists of going through our vocabulary list two times and saying each word. Each word is then digitized and stored in memory as a template or voice print similar to a person's thumbprint. And then all those words are then saved uh, according to each person as their template. Okay, when the astronaut wants to use the system, he will come in, he'll plug in his headset and plug in the display and the shorting plug. And then all he has to do is turn on the power switch to on. And that's the only manual uh, step necessary. Um, after when the system powers up, then the system automatically prompts the astronaut to say his name. When he says his name, it recognizes who he is. It will go out and load his templates from memory into the recognizer. Then when he wants to control the system, he'll say a command. It takes that word and digitizes it and compares it with the words that were loaded into the recognizer. If it finds a match, it sends, that inf it sends some information from the recognizer to our controlling hardware where we process information, figure out what word it was, and then send the appropriate signal out to the CCTV system to control a camera or a movement or a monitor, whatever the function happens to be. The voice command system is the first experiment to be flown in space which uses voice as a control. We think this is going to be useful to the astronauts for two reasons. And the first reason is that by having a system which is voice controlled, the astronaut's hands and eyes are free to perform other tasks. The second reason is that by using a voice controlled system, it isn't necessary for you to be in the location where the system is in order to control it. So you're free to move around and you can be remotely located. So. No, we can have as many people as want to can use our system. We have it set up so that only five, five people can actually have their voices put onto E squared prompts. But we also have the ability to retrain templates real time. So anybody who wants to use the system may not already have their templates made, but they can come up to the system and make their templates anytime they want. So we're not limited on the number of people who can use the system. Well, we have 40 commands that are possible on the voice command system. Most of these commands are exact duplicates to what are on the CCTV manual switch panel. And these are selecting monitors, cameras, and working the camera motions like panning and tilting, zooming, focusing, all of those. We also have some DCS unique commands which are used to activate the system, deactivate the system, identify the user. And we also have some special macro commands. For example, we have a command that will stow all of the cameras in the payload bay into the position that they have to be in for launch and entry simply by saying stow cameras. So we also have some special features that the manual switch panel doesn't have. How did you choose the words that you used and why did you use those words? Well, the way we chose the words to use is because they're the words that are actually on the switch panel. So they're the ones they're familiar with. When they think of moving a camera up, they think of tilting it up. So we, we selected all of those words. Now, they did tailor their vocabulary to their personal use, words that they were the most comfortable with, words that worked the best for them. So both of our astronauts have, have a different vocabulary, but they're also very similar. And they're the words that make sense to them. And that's how we came up with our vocabulary. Well, there's not a lot known about the effects of microgravity on the voice. We do know that in zero gravity, that the position and the shape of the lungs and diaphragm are altered. Now, if this causes a great enough um, distortion in the voice, good recognition could be difficult to get. So we're expecting that this may be a problem. How did you anticipate that problem? Well, what we're going to do is that if the astronauts do find that they have trouble getting recognition, we have the ability to remake their templates real time. So simply by clicking this mode switch twice, the system is automatically put into the template making mode. 
and our system will prompt them through the entire vocabulary list. They'll say each word twice, and they'll have a brand new set of templates that are real and representative of their voice at that time. It feels so fabulous. You know, there's times when you really think it isn't going to fly. It's just, it's not going to go. And now not only is it going to go, but our astronauts love it. They love it. They're having fun with it. Everybody we've shown it to likes it. People are coming up out of the corners with ideas of how to use it. And it really makes you feel like you've accomplished a lot. One of the 